in the ABCE method, audience, behavior, condition, degree. And we'll learn more about that next week. We have to identify how are we going to deliver this training? What are we going to use to appeal to those visual learners, those auditory learners? So some parts of uh, facilitating or, or teaching methods include the list that we have here. This PowerPoint is going to be posted for you so you can refer back to it. These different types of instructional methods or strategies are explained on this next slide in detail. Some of them are apparent. Presentation is what I'm doing right here. I'm speaking to the audience. I'm presenting a visual. Problem solving. Maybe you are going to give your learners a problem to solve. We do that through case studies. Maybe we're going to demonstrate something so you can see how it looks. Maybe I'm going to incorporate some instructional games. Some learners like games, some learners do not like games. Some adult learners are very competitive, some adult learners do not like that competitive atmosphere. So if you're going to introduce an instructional game, you need to make sure that you don't do it all the time. Or we might just have a discussion about the topic. Or we may incorporate a little of this and a little of that. But we need a variety so that we can reach out to our learners. Simulations. We need to simulate the actual learning context. And we do that sometimes if we're learning to be a pilot. We first need to get behind a simulator so it looks like we're flying, but we're not really flying. Sometimes we do cooperative Drill and practice, where there are practice exercises, and then there's feedback. How well did that learner perform? Let's try it again. And the learner improves with each step of the way. Then we can do something called discovery, where the learner learns through trial and error. Or a tutorial. We're all familiar with those tutorials. A lot of that is online now. If you want to know something, you go online and you find a tutorial. YouTube is really good for finding tutorials on the how to, how to do something. Also in the design phase, we need to look at what type of media have we chosen. So in one aspect, we have the strategy, the presentation, the discussion, the discovery. But in this other aspect of design, we actually have to have the products, the printouts, the audio, the video, the computer. We have to develop these PowerPoints. What is it that we have chose to convey our message? Then we get into the, the development phase, and in this phase, we actually produce what we have designed. So if you have designed a PowerPoint that's going to be 20 slides long, now you need to develop it. What will it look like? If you have chosen to distribute handouts, now you need to develop those handouts. You need to actually print them out, bring them into physical being. We also need to compose an instructional plan, and that's a training blueprint. We need to make everything that we have said we were going to do, we need to assign it specific time slots. If I'm going to present something, how long am I going to present? If you only have a 30 minute segment, maybe you only want to dedicate 15 minutes to the presentation. Maybe you want to dedicate more. You need to allocate these times. It's part of the planning process. It's part of the blueprint process. You will be distributed at a layout of an instructional blueprint so that you can enter in how much time you're going to use for the different segments of your training. And that handout is going to be incorporated into your written paper. The implementation, this part is where you make final preparations for a pilot test. So that pilot test is really an evaluation. What sort of things are going to work for this training and what sort of things should be tweaked or should be revised?
revised in some way. So we see that last step of the adding process, evaluation, we see it peaking up here into the implementation phase. It's very important not to leave evaluation out of this step because we don't want to become in a situation where the training is really not effective because we have forgotten to include something or we have included something that shouldn't be there because the learners already know that. So we want to make better use of that time. So if we use a pilot audience, it's going to be an audience that has very similar characteristics and needs as our real training audience will have. And this allows us to make necessary revisions. And one group rule of thumb is the formative evaluation, which is what is happening in this stage. Formative is where you have the opportunity to make revisions. There are two types of evaluation. We're going to learn that in the next couple of slides. This is the formative evaluation. So you have the opportunity to make any changes you need. What if on your PowerPoint you continuously misspell the word and someone caught that? So you revise that. You have the opportunity to revise that. What if that same mistake was carried through in your actual training session? You're going to say, man, I wish I really would have taken the time for a pilot test so I could have revised that. A rule of thumb is to have three people look at the training, the materials, and actually go through at least three people because you want to bring in at least three perspectives. One of those three people is going to be the type of individual that concentrates on details like spelling and grammar. Another one might say, well, the font is a little too small, so you might increase the font size. So you're going to get three different perspectives, and that's really important. Here we talk about evaluation and the two different types. Formative is what happens before that training session is actually launched. And that gives the instructional designer a chance to make revisions. <coughs> Summative is what happens after the training session has already been implemented, after the learners have already undergone the training, and they're giving their feedback. They still give the same sort of feedback. What did you think about the instructor? What did you think about the room? What did you think about the handouts? What could have made this training session even more effective for you? What things were incorporated that made the training session effective for you? So we get some feedback. Did you learn what you were supposed to learn? So in other words, the goal of the training was to set the table. Are you leaving this room today with the knowledge of how to set the table? So that is part of the summative evaluation. Did the training have some value? 